YouTube frogs, welcome back to another complete guide, this time covering the dependable deputy leader of the Arataki gang, Kuki Shinobu. As the newest 4 star electro character, we'll be covering how she's designed and what her gameplay feels like, my recommendations for optimal builds with both weapons and artifacts, how constellations affect her, team comps, and a gameplay showcase. Footage in this video was captured on the media server and any additional findings not covered in this video will be in the pinned comment, so don't forget to check that out and leave a comment yourself. Let's dive right into it. So, our lovely deputy leader, how does she work? She is the first electro healer introduced to the game with her base kit design being primarily HP% percent focused with additional elemental mastery secondary synergy. Gameplay design looks to be a combination of Chi Chi slash Barbara's healing elemental skill, Amber's elemental burst, and has Hu Tao's HP sacrificing design. Her most consistent ability lies in her elemental skill, Sanctifying Ring. She sacrifices 30% of her current HP to summon an electro ring around her that pulses every 1.5 seconds, healing the active character and dealing electro damage to nearby enemies. She cannot fall below 20% HP using this, so the skill sacrifices no HP if that's the case. This Electro Pulse does follow normal internal cooldown rules of 3 hits or 2.5 seconds, which means Shinobu will apply Electro based on timer and not hits. Every other hit will be 3 seconds and apply Electro Element. From the different support builds that I've tested, her healing ranges from 2000 to 3000 per tick. 8 ticks over a 12 second duration, she heals about 16 to 24,000 HP on single target. With a 15 second cooldown that starts right away, her downtime at 3 seconds is really short and feels like basically 100%. Her Constellation 2 then guarantees this uptime to be 100% at 15 out of 15 seconds. Unfortunately, the raw damage from her Electro Ring is attack scaling. It's not a significant multiplier though, so I'd mainly view it as an Elemental Reaction skill rather than ability that deals damage. Elemental Burst, Gyoei Narukami Kariyama Wright. I tried my best. This is simply an Electro Amber Burst that increases in duration if Shinobu is under 50% HP. 2 seconds if above and 3.5 seconds if below. The damage is proportionally increased based on the time. It is max HP percent based with medium energy cost and a cooldown at 60 energy per 15 seconds. It does deal decent amount of damage providing an avenue for burst DPS Shinobu. In a support setting though, I find that her elemental burst has pretty limited use only for electro application and minor burst DPS and not too important to loop in a rotation. Finally, her normal attack charge attack chain. Unfortunately, this is mostly just for show unless you plan on running a physical Shinobu. Her third attack, Kunai Throw, is pretty cool though. A shame it won't be used that often in practical situations. Talent priority seems pretty intuitive. First, an elemental skill or a go. Ignore the normal attack. If you're running supportive Shinobu, prioritize elemental skill. If you're running burst DPS Shinobu, prioritize elemental burst. Now her passive abilities. One of them improves her healing and the other grants synergy with elemental mastery. A1 talent provides 15% healing bonus if she's below 50% HP. A4 provides her elemental skill some elemental mastery scaling. Both her healing and damage is improved by EM. The healing is pretty meaningful and allows triple EM to still heal about 80% as effectively as an HP oriented build. The damage increase is pretty insignificant. Both of these passives are straightforward. The elemental mastery passive from A4 provides a nice alternative build path for elemental mastery reaction shinobu that still heals with relative effectiveness. Now, as a 4-star, constellations are reasonably feasible to get and are pretty significant to 4-star strength. Let's take a peek before running through my recommendations for builds. Constellation 1 improves her burst radius by 50%. There's no damage increase as far as I'm aware for this. Constellation 2 improves her elemental skill uptime to 15 seconds out of 15 seconds for 100%. Originally 12 seconds with 15 second cooldown, here it's plus 3 seconds increase to 15 seconds. Constellation 4 adds an AoE Electro Damage Shock every 5 seconds during her elemental skill uptime. Constellation 6, she gets to defy death once every minute. And when she's below 25% HP, every minute she'll have plus 150 Elemental Mastery for 15 seconds. Those are distinct instances. Honestly, I find these not the most impressive. A little bit of quality of life here and there, but no significant improvements to her gameplay besides Constellation 6. But the downtime, which is 60 seconds, is fairly long for only a 15 second uptime. Constellation 2 does improve her Electro Ring uptime, which is nice. Constellation 4 doesn't really change her Electro application since it's only 1 hit every 5 seconds. Normally, we get 1 hit every 1.5 seconds when her E is up, which translates to 2 per 3 seconds. On paper, even with Constellation 4, it looks like we don't get enough hits to improve her Electro application 
beyond the three hits or 2.5 seconds per rotation. So that's how it looks currently. Constellation 6 is a nice quality of life, but the elemental mastery uptime is only barely 25%. Overall, I find that Constellation 2 probably has the most immediate value, and then Constellation 6 for the occasional 150 EM buff. So that's an encompassing breakdown of what to expect from Shinobu's kit. A grand overview at Constellation Zero shows her as a dedicated electro healer with elemental mastery synergy. She's capable of running as an HP based burst DPS and her constellations don't drastically improve her gameplay. For her stats, she looks to prioritize her supportive capabilities and skills the best off of HP, elemental mastery, and energy recharge if you're concerned about burst uptime, which currently doesn't seem too necessary for her. DPS Shinobu probably wishes to prioritize energy recharge for burst looping and then HP and crit stats for offensive damage output via her burst. Let's go over what I would recommend as a solid build. So for weapons, there's no weapon besides Jade Cutter that provides HP% percent as a secondary stat. So we're looking for team utility first and then her other stats second. Are there any budget 3 star options? Not really. Dark Iron Sword is available as an elemental mastery weapon and that's about it. Harbinger of Dawn is anti-synergistic since Shinobu will always be sacrificing her HP and almost never be at 90% plus. What about 4 star options? I would say she's got 2 of them. Top priority is running Favonia's Sword for her colorless orb generation for the team. Her build will be prioritizing a little bit more crit rate substats for consistency on the passive proc. Other option is Iron Sting, strictly for the elemental mastery secondary stat. This is a craftable option available for all players including F2P. And then if you're considering running her as a burst DPS, any heavy crit option is usable. Her burst does not scale off of attacks, so you're really looking for a maximized crit. Now, 5 star options? Probably her best offensive supportive choice is Kazuha's signature Freedom Swarm. It's elemental mastery secondary stat and reaction based passive, easy to proc with her electro ring even if off field. For burst DPS options, we have two. Jade Cutter is an excellent choice, providing HP increase, juicy crit rate, and also an excellent aesthetic choice. Then we have Miss Butter for elemental damage bonus and crit damage. Only two out of the three stacks are possible by herself though, since she does not have elemental infusion for her normal attacks. So for this normal attack to use elemental damage, she will not have the stack. It's still the strongest choice for burst damage, even with just two stacks though. And if you just want recharge for her, Skyward Blade is on the table. But again, I don't find the energy recharge too significant for her, since her burst has no supportive capability to it. It's only for damage. And that's really about it for her weapons. I personally will be probably running Favonia's Sword for the team utility. All right, let's get into artifact setups. So this is mostly building around her elemental skill, which holds all of the useful utility in her kit. The number one choice, a perfect holder for a four piece tenacity set. The HP percent goes perfect and her elemental skill procs once every 1.5 seconds for 100% uptime on the attack and shield strength buff even when she is off field. Other possible 4 piece options, we have 4 piece Noblesse, the other team buff set in the game. It's basically a worse version of Tenacity for Shinobu specifically though because there's no real benefit to looping her burst and she has 100% uptime on the attack with Tenacity. 4 piece Clam set, this is a mixture of healing bonus and the bubble pop damage. Though Shinobu will not be able to hit anywhere close to the 30,000 HP threshold with her single target healing. That's a little bit less optimal for her. 4 piece emblem set. Go to choice for burst DPS Shinobu even with minimal recharge. And then a great 4 star option. 4 piece instructor set. This is a self elemental mastery and team wide elemental mastery buff. Pretty easy for Shinobu to proc and maintain. It's great for reaction based comps. Now say you don't have an available 4 set for Shinobu. What about some 2 piece combinations? Well. Anything that has HP, Elemental Mastery, even Healing Bonus, and minimally Recharge all can work. So we have Tenacity for HP%, percent. we have Wanderer's 2-piece, Instructor 2-piece for Elemental Mastery, we have Clam 2-piece or Maiden's 2-piece for Healing Bonus, and then we have Emblem 2-piece, Exile and Scholar for Recharge. Personally, I would stick to the HP, Elemental Mastery, and Healing Bonus for those 2-piece sets. Alright, on to main stat choices. From what I've played around with, Shinobu is pretty damn flexible with build paths. From pure support to mixed hybrid to burst DPS, she can basically be anywhere in between when it comes to her stats. Here's my first look findings for her main stat layouts. We have the maximized healing build. This is HP timepiece, HP goblet, healing bonus mask. This is a build that's only concerned about her elemental skill. Her burst does not matter at all. Then we have the max tankiness build, which is triple HP percent the bulkiest and lowest effort build, heals pretty decently. Then we have the Favonius healing build. This is an HP timepiece, HP goblet, and crit rate mask. 
This is strictly to provide enough crit rate so that Favonia's sword procs its passive frequently enough. Then we have a DPS build. HP Timepiece, Electro Goblet, and Crit Rate or Crit Damage Mask. This is for highest burst damage, since the burst damage is HP scaling with the lowest healing. Still heals like decent though. And then we have the Reaction build. This is the Triple Elemental Mastery build. Highest reaction damage, and honestly, the healing is not too bad. It's about 80% the healing of the Triple HP build due to her Ascension 4 passive. Any of these builds have worked just fine for me. For now, I'm going to opt with the Favonius healing build. Then, if my subsets get better, I'll run the DPS build and still heal a decent chunk. The energy recharge you see on this build is mainly from Favonius Sword, so don't be fooled. I don't actually care about it that much. So, how do team comps look? Though Cookie is an Electro healer, her elemental skill is limited only within melee range to apply Electro. I find that there are three situations in which Cookie is a viable slot in as an Electro healer. First, Mono Electro Compositions. These comps will generally revolve around a Raiden Shogun plus Sara Carry Composition, with Cookie as the healing slot, and the fourth being preferably an Anemo Buffer like Coswell or can offer another Electro, Hydro, or Generic Sub DPS. With Raiden Shogun as the main DPS, I recommend Constellation 2 Plus. And with Sara as the main buffer, I recommend Constellation 2 Minimum, but honestly, only C6 is worth for the Electro Crit damage for Raiden Shogun. So optimally, the Mono Electro team comp would look like C2 plus Raiden, C6 Sara, C0 plus Cookie, and then Kazuha. With Cookie on Favonia's sword and both her elemental skill and Raiden's elemental skill active, energy generation for the team seems to be a non-issue. Sara with her 80 cost burst and no real energy generation of her own seems to be the most hungry for energy in this team. Second, Taser Compositions. So these compositions would typically surround a melee-oriented Hydro Carry, like Tartag or Ionto, alongside Cookie, plus one Anemo for the Swirls, Debuff, and Buffing, and then either a second Hydro or a second Electro for the fourth slot. Personally, I find a double Electro to be a lot more consistent in overall DPS, and choose between either Beidou or Fischl depending on AoE or single target situations. Something like Ayato, C6 Fischl, Cookie, and Anemo tends to work just fine. Third, the Eula Raiden Rotational Burst Composition. This is a variation on the Eula Raiden Diana plus X combo, but instead with Eula Raiden and Cookie plus X. So X is usually a bodyguard, like John Lee for example, to prevent Eula from being interrupted during her burst chain. And also, I know that a lot of players would prefer Diana over Cookie for her cryo battery utility for Eula, which is totally expected. I find that adding Cookie to this composition and then swapping Diana for a more offensive cryo like Rosaria assists pretty well. So something like this team comp has both double Electro Resonance and double Cryo Resonance alongside Rosaria's crit rate transfer and low cooldown abilities. Honorable mention to Overload Compositions. Personally, I would not recommend running this since Cookie's elemental skill has pretty restricted range, so knockback is a very heavy problem that will cause enemies to move outside of her Electro Ring range. Against larger enemies though, who don't get pushed back, go crazy. So those are currently my three recommendations for team comp building with Cookie. Any additional findings from the community will be updated in the pinned comment. Since Cookie is an Electro Healer, I typically prioritize some form of a Nemo to pair with her since that offsets the lack of DPS she provides for more survivability and element application. Currently, we have either Mono Electro or Taser to combine with this, and then the exception is the Superconduct with Eula. Who knows if anything will improve with Sumero and Dendro arriving sometime in the future with version 3. Now for a little bit of in-game playtesting, featuring these Cookie compositions in the Abyss. My cookie here is running Favonia's Sword with 4-piece tenacity with HP, HP, crit rate, main stat pieces. Mirage HP sits at about 35,000, which feels abnormally high for a base 10k HP and 2 HP main stat pieces. My artifacts show 20,000 HP, but the stats show 24,000 HP, I'm not sure why. My crit rate is suitable at 50% for Favonia's procs, recharge is 180% due to Favonia's Sword and some substats. Base talent level at 166. Cue the music, Mr. Cope.
So, what do I think of Cookie? Currently, fairly limited in gameplay design, which is a shame since she has great personality showing in the quest line and her design is very cute. Her constellations also don't help significantly in improving her gameplay design, which makes it tougher to slot her in for niche comps. I find that she does great in Mono Electro, but the composition itself is a bit expensive for good returns. Constellation 2 Raiden and Constellation 6 Sara is not an easy feat for most players. Her build path is very flexible though, and in my opinion, relatively cheap. Energy generation is much better than I expected from her elemental skill, which is quite nice for electro related comps. If you are in need of an electro healer, she'll definitely do that job just fine. And that wraps up the cookie guide up. Any additional findings or updates will be in the pinned comment. Good luck to those summoning, and I hope that all cookie wanters become cookie havers. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to like if you learned something, and we'll see you next time. Take care.